Okay, in the previous lecture, uh, we looked at ordinary generating functions. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so uh, one example. Now, uh, we will uh, look at uh, you know a couple of more examples uh, uh, before going into further uh, topics. So let us let us start with uh, uh, another example. So uh, here is our uh, uh, example uh, two. So again, uh, we have our uh, our five devotees uh, of the blue goddess. Okay. So now, uh, what they do is that uh, uh, they change their uh, strategy uh, of uh, of conversion. So they, they started converting in a different way. So what they do is that uh, on the on the first day, they will uh, preach uh, to one recruit who joins. Okay. So the first morning, right after the religion was formed. The first morning, they will uh, convert only one person. Now, the new converts follow the same strategy, right? One, 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 once they join the religion, the next morning, uh, they will uh, uh, preach to one person, then recruit. Uh, then every uh, devotee from his second morning onwards recruits nine others. So they have increased the base. So the first day it will be relaxed, but then next day onwards, they are more uh, uh, energetic and they are going to convert nine people every day morning. Now, once converted, uh, all uh, the converted people remain the devotees. They, nobody uh, changes uh, their opinion. Now, in this case, uh, how many devotees will be there after the nth day? Okay. So, uh, a slight modification from the previous question, right? So, we started with our five uh, devotees of Blue Goddess who wears uh, blue t-shirts, right? And then uh, they convert uh, people uh, in the following way, right? So first day they will preach to only one person. Second day onwards, they will introduce uh, nine more pers persons. And whoever has converted, their next morning, right, the first day, uh, they will convert one person. And then uh, the next morning onwards, they will convert nine others. So similar to the previous question, we can form a, a recurrence relation and then try to solve it. Right? So using the generative functions. So let us see uh, how we can form the recurrence relation. I I, uh, I recommend that you uh, really uh, try to do it on your own. Then uh, once you give it a try, come back here and continue. So we have uh, the following observation that uh, if dn we denote the devotees after n days, then uh, d0 is 5, right? the uh, zero of the day, right? When the religion is formed, there are five devotees. And at the end of uh, the first day, right, d1, uh, you have uh, 10 devotees because they converted, uh, each of them converted one more person. So I have 10 persons. Now nobody change, you know is uh, going to uh, give up the religion after they join it. So therefore, at the end of uh, day one, you have 10. Then, uh, what is the recursive formula, right? So we have d0 is 5 and d1 is 10. Now, can you find out formula for dn, right? Where n is equal to 1 equal to 2. So if you think about it, you will see that, okay, so the first, uh, First day they convert five, but second day onwards each of them converts uh, nine others, right? So therefore, whoever joins this day, right, on the n minus one today, they convert. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, whoever is present there, uh, they will all convert one person at least, right? So everybody converts one. So all the dn minus one people will convert at least one person. So therefore, we have two into dn minus one person. The end of the day, you have 2 into dn minus 1. Now, each, you know, each person uh, who was there in the previous, right, who, so this is not the first day for uh, some people, they will all converge 8 more people, right, because, because they, uh, in total they convert 9, so 1 is already counted, so uh, they convert 8 more people. 
so people who are uh, this is the second day which is d n minus 2 right each of them right d n minus 2 of them are uh, are having the second day now so they will all convert uh, uh, nine people so therefore eight more new people other than themselves so therefore we have 2 into d n minus 1 plus 8 into d n minus 2 is d n right because whoever is there then everybody converts one person and then each of the persons who have, who is having the second day or more right all those people uh, will convert eight more others so that, therefore we have 8 into dn minus 2 plus 2 into dn minus 2 so therefore we have the recurrence relation now we can uh, use the method of generative function so how do you do that for that For that, we uh, multiply by x ratio n on both sides of the recursion relation and then sum overall uh, n greater than or equal to 2, right? So, summation uh, dn x ratio n, n greater than or equal to 2 is equal to 2 times summation n greater than or equal to 2, dn minus 1 x ratio n plus 8 times uh, dn minus 2 x ratio n, n greater than or equal to 2. Why n uh, greater than or equal to 2? Because uh, the recursion formula holds for n. Equal to 2 and we have the term dn minus 2 right so the index only starts from 0 so i have n is greater than or equal to 2 now so if you look at the uh, you know the form for summation uh, dn right x raise to n from that which is let's say d of x if i denote by d of x summation dn x raise to n Right, d of x is equal to summation dn into x raised to n. dn into x raised to n. Uh, then, then we have uh, d of uh, you know dn x raised to n n greater than equal to two uh, has the first two times missing, which is uh, you know d n minus one x. I mean d one x and d zero. So we subtract that uh, to get the LHS, right? D of x minus 10x minus 5 because uh, D1 is 10 and uh, D0 is 5. On the other hand, on the right side, you have two times summation Dn minus 1x raised to n. I take 1x outside. I get uh, 2x into D of x minus 5 because the first term is missing from the summation. Right? And then you have from the last one, you have, you can take x square outside, you will get a D of x uh, there. So I get 8x square D of x. So therefore, I get the formula. Now, uh, simplify this for uh, uh, d of x. I get d of x is equal to 5 divided by 1 minus 2x minus 8x square. Now, the uh, you know the, the equation. I mean, the, the polynomial 1 minus 2x minus 8x square can be easily factored. So I will get as uh, 1 plus 2x into 1 minus 4x. So this will be uh, written as a method of uh, partial fractions. We can write it as alpha by 1 plus 2x plus beta by 1 minus 4x. So we solve for alpha and beta. We will get uh, alpha is equal to 5 by 3 and beta is equal to 10 by 3. Okay, this is something you can you can do from uh, from uh, what we have done before, right? So you take uh, the cross product compare the uh, coefficients and then we will get this uh, equations uh, after solving which you will get alpha and beta now uh, therefore d of x is equal to 5 by 3 into 1 by uh, 1 plus 2x plus 10 by 3 into 1 by 1 minus 4x now this is uh, now easy because uh, coefficient of uh, x raised to n uh, in d of x i can find out by expanding these two uh, functions to series so I will get this as 5 by 3 into minus 1 whole ratio n, 2 ratio n because that is the uh, 1 by 1 plus 2x goes to minus 2 uh, x whole ratio n, right? So which is minus 1 whole ratio n, 2 ratio n. And then you get uh, 10 by 3 into 4 ratio n because 1 by 1 minus 4x goes to 4 ratio n, x ratio n, summation 4 ratio n, x ratio n. So the coefficient of uh, x ratio n in d of x is precisely uh, this right so uh, 10 by 3 into 4 raised to n minus uh, uh, 
plus minus 1 whole ratio n 5 by 3 into 2 raised to n. So d0 is 5. Uh, you know, we can verify by putting n is equal to 0. For example, I will get uh, 5 by 3 uh, plus uh, 10 by 3, which is uh, 15 by 3. Uh, which is 5 and uh, d1 uh, is uh, again n is equal to 1 i will get uh, minus 10 by 3 plus uh, 40 by 3 which is 10 this is also correct so similarly we can verify for uh, other values so i get a uh, close formula for uh, dn right? so now uh, we see how uh, powerful this method is Uh, we look at uh, another uh, famous sequence uh, which we call the Hemachandra sequence, right? So Hemachandra sequence, if you remember, is also called the Fibonacci Hemachandra or Hemachandra Fibonacci sequence. And uh, this sequence uh, satisfies the recurrence relation, as is, uh, you know we already know, uh, is H n is equal to H n minus one plus H n minus two, right? So uh, and and uh, starting uh, conditions, initial condition can be uh, H0 is equal to 1, H1 is equal to 1, and then uh, you can you can continue. I mean, uh, you have a slightly different way of defining the initial conditions because sometimes uh, people uh, start by you know, 1, uh, then uh, uh, 2, and then etc. Uh, right, 1, 1, 2, etc. Sometimes uh, you, it will start with 0, 1, uh, etc. Right. So uh, this will make uh, only very uh, minor difference uh, because you know just uh, shifting in the uh, index so we don't have to worry about that we will assume that this is our uh, current uh, initial condition so hn is equal to hn minus 1 plus hn minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 2 h0 is 1 h1 is 1 so we can uh, do uh, now let us uh, compute this uh, h of x uh, in a slightly different manner right we know that uh, we know that uh, h of x is summation h n x raised to n, right? Now let us look at uh, the coefficient of x raised to n in h of x minus x times h of x minus x square times h of x. Now why do I look at this? Because because uh, you know h n equal to h n minus one plus h n minus two. That uh, identity is there. Now, if I look at uh, coefficient of x raised to n in h of x, that is basically h n. Then uh, coefficient of uh, x raised to n in x times h of x, x is uh, basically uh, h n minus one. And coefficient of x square, uh, you know, times h, uh, coefficient of x raised to n in x square times h of x is basically uh, h n minus two. Right. So this is this is uh, clear because x square basically shifts the times by uh, 2 so therefore i get a coefficient of uh, x raised to n will be uh, hn minus 2 now hn minus hn minus 1 minus hn minus 2 is 0 because for n greater than or equal to 2 uh, we have this identity right uh, satisfied by the uh, hemachandra uh, uh, series or, or uh, hemachandra sequence uh, hn is equal to hn minus 1 plus hn minus 2 so therefore we have uh, this uh, coefficient of x raised to n for this part is 0, right? For n greater than or equal to 2. Now, what for n is equal to 0, what is the coefficient of x raised to 0, right? Coefficient of x raised to 0 in this is precisely h0, right? Because uh, when, uh, uh, you know, it's equal to 0, we, we you know, we have only, you know, the, the, the term from uh, h0 will not get cancelled. Right. So therefore, uh, that is at zero, but that is zero. So therefore, uh, you know, the reason we assumed at zero to be zero is to make this uh, slightly simpler. Now, question of x raised to one in in the same uh, is that you know you can take uh, h of x. So h one will survive, right? H one uh, x, and then uh, uh, h zero x from the second time will also survive, right? But h zero because uh, uh, h zero is zero. Uh, and h1 is 1, uh, h1 minus h0 is basically 1. That is the coefficient of x raised to 1, right? Because coefficient of x raised to 1 in the uh, in the second term is uh, basically h1, right? Because there is a shift. Uh, you know, uh, the second term is h0 because there is a shift. And the first term is h1. And third term there is no, uh, there is no uh, h0 or h1, right? I mean, there is no, there is no uh, x, right? Because we are multiplying by x squared. 
so uh, so uh, you know uh, so x0 uh, like you know uh, coefficient of x raised to 0 coefficient of x raised to 1 and coefficient of x raised to n we have got. so therefore we have the complete information about the uh, uh, about the uh, difference of this uh, power theory, right? So h of x minus uh, x times h of x minus x square times h of x is actually uh, uh, equal to. So you know the 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 equation right in in x, which is uh, uh, with coefficient zero for uh, whenever the power of x is uh, at least two, uh, coefficient zero whenever the power is zero, and coefficient one when the power is 1. So that is the polynomial x. So therefore, we get this uh, difference of the uh, formal power series, uh, you know, these three is precisely x, right? So now I get a formula for h of x immediately by putting h of x together. So x divided by 1 minus x minus x square, right? So h of x is equal to x by 1 minus x minus x square. If I write it as x by 1 minus alpha x into 1 minus beta x, uh, you know, by the method of partial fractions, we can solve it. And then we will get, uh, uh, you know, okay, before applying the method of partial fractions, we can first uh, solve for uh, the, uh, you know, 1 minus uh, x minus x square uh, decomposes into 1 minus alpha x and 1 minus beta x by alpha equal to 1 plus root 5 by 2 and 1 minus root 5 by 2. This is the solution of quadratic equation. So therefore, uh, we can we can immediately get it. And, uh, you know, the roots alpha and beta. And once you once you have this, uh, we use the uh, method of partial fraction, right? So uh, once you write down, you can, we can show that uh, this actually reduces to uh, the following, okay? I can write it as, so this computation now is routine. So therefore, I, I leave it to you. Uh, you know, I don't want to spend time on working out uh, this uh, minor details. Uh, so you work with this, and if you have any questions, uh, get back to me, right? So uh, therefore, uh, uh, x by 1 minus alpha x into 1 minus beta x, uh, I can write as 1 by alpha minus beta into 1 minus alpha x minus 1 minus uh, 1 by uh, 1 minus beta x. Okay. So if you solve it like this, then, uh, you know, this 1 by uh, alpha minus beta is precisely uh, root 5, uh, 1 minus, yeah, is precisely root 5. And uh, and then I will get uh, this uh, 1 by 1 minus alpha x minus 1 by 1 minus beta x, where alpha and beta are exactly like uh, we have said before, right? 1 plus root 5 by 2 and 1 minus root 5 by 2. Then solving for, uh, uh, you know, I know, not solving. So now we need to just find out the coefficient of x raised to n uh, in this, right? That is easy because I have it is in a, uh, in a nice form 1 by 1 minus uh, 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 alpha x and 1 by 1 minus beta x. So which is, I uh, you know, coefficient is x alpha raised to n and the second one is beta raised to n. So therefore I have 1 by root 5 into alpha raised to n minus beta raised to n is the coefficient of x raised to n. So hn is now. 1 by root 5 into 1 plus root 5 by 2 whole ratio n minus 1 minus root 5 by 2 whole ratio n. Right? So this, there is a bracket which I have missed. Uh, yes, so that is it. So we have uh, a now uh, closed formula for computing n. Now, uh, it may be interesting uh, to see that this is always uh, an integer, right? So, 1 plus root 5 by 2 uh, whole ratio n minus 1 minus root 5 by 2 whole ratio n divided by root 5 is always an integer because hn is our uh, Fibonacci uh, or uh, Hemachandra sequence. Okay, so I will uh, give you a couple of uh, homework questions. So, use generating functions to solve the following. So we have the uh, following uh, situation. So there is a nice pond uh, or, or a lake, let's say it's a magic lake. So this magic lake has this property. If you if you throw, let's say, 50 uh, lotus flowers uh, to the lake, then every day the number of flowers grows by four times at the midnight. So every uh, night, you know, 
uh, the number of flowers multiplies by 4. Okay, so if there is 50, then next morning you will see 200 of them. So in the morning, 100 flowers will be picked for sale. Okay, so you know, people uh, use this that you put 50 or uh, whatever, let's say, some uh, flowers. And uh, next day you have four times, so you take some of them and then sell it. So if I start with 50, then first day I get, uh, you know, first night I will get uh, uh, 200. Then I pick up 100 and sell it. So then the remaining uh, 100 will be there. That will multiply by four times, right? So 4 uh, into 400, then I again take 100. You have remaining 300. And then that's this way uh, I keep on doing, right? Now after 30 days, how many flowers will be? There in the lake, right? And how many uh, day? Uh, how many will be there after n days in general? So try to uh, so find the recursion uh, formula, right? And solve it uh, using the method of generating functions. Second question uh, asks you to solve the recursion relation. B n plus two is equal to three times B n plus one minus two times B n. Now, uh, the initial conditions are uh, assumed to be B0 is 1 and B1 is equal to 1. Okay? Now, again, use this information, find the generative function for B of x, which is the sequence, uh, you know, which is the generative function for the sequence Bn. And uh, using this, uh, deduce an explicit formula for Bn. Right? From the generative function, we want to find a closed formula for Bn. That question asks you uh, to do the following. Given uh, a sequence, let's say uh, Fn, uh, and this Fn satisfies the following recurrence relation, right? So summation i equal to 0 to k, Fi into Fk minus i is equal to k plus 2 choose 2. Okay? This uh, recurrence is uh, satisfied by uh, Fi for k greater than or equal to 1. And F0 is 1. Now find uh, f of x, the generative function uh, for uh, uh, the sequence fn, and then use it to uh, deduce uh, a formula for uh, fn. Okay, and then compute f4 uh, using this uh, identity. So this is what uh, we want. Now we look at uh, the combinatorial meaning of the product of generative functions. So, suppose you are given two uh, sequences, right? Uh, let's say a n and b n, uh, which represent the number of ways, let's say two different combinatorial structures on sets uh, can be built. Okay. Uh, on an n element set. So given uh, given an n element set, I want to make uh, let's say uh, using this uh, uh, using this n element set, I want to make uh, let's say permutation. Right? Similarly, given uh, uh, n as a parameter, I want to say what is the what is the number of uh, uh, triangulations uh, and uh, uh, n sided polygon can have right so these kind of uh, things uh, can be uh, you know represented by sequences a n and b now <clears throat> we define c n to be the total number of ways okay so given given uh, given an n element set uh, let let me take uh, you know so 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 let us say that uh, you have uh, you have this set 1 to 1 to n right uh, uh, you know, there is a there is an ordering we fix and then uh, uh, so so on this set uh, uh, let's say 1 to n what I am going to do is that I want to first build a structure of this type p right you know uh, let's say that talking about permutation so I want to make permutations on the set let's say 1 to i for some i then I want to make a uh, type B structure, which is uh, in our uh, example, which is uh, uh, we were looking at what uh, the uh, triangulations of a polygon, right? So I want to make, uh, I'll, I'll count the uh, 
polygons right uh, and the number of uh, such uh, triangulations right so i want to make triangulations of uh, uh, a polygon which can be made uh, out of uh, i plus 1 to n yeah, right or like i want to put a structure on on the set uh, t is equal to i plus 1 to n yeah. so so we have two type of structures let's say a type a and type b right so type a structures on an n element set i have a n of them and type b structures there are b n of them now Cn is defined to be the total number of ways to first build a structure of type A on uh, the set uh, 1 to uh, i and then uh, a type B structure on the set i plus 1 to n for uh, some i. <clears throat> so for each i, uh, this uh, can be done, right? So from, you know, i ranging from uh, 0 to n, I can do this. So I can say that, okay, I don't build anything, uh, you know, I put the empty uh, set on which I, if I can do some structure of type A, I do that. Then uh, for the, the, the remaining all and, uh, elements, I put the structure B. Or I can say that for one element, I, you know, one I will take here, the remaining uh, 2 to n minus uh, 2, 2 to n, I will put uh, uh, structure uh, B again. Similarly, I can take the all uh, elements, uh, say, you know, 1 to n and put uh, a structure uh, A on that and then in the empty set I can put structure B, right? So this way I do for every possible I. Now if A of X uh, and B of X uh, gen uh, you know, represent the generative functions for uh, A N and B N and C of X uh, represent the generative function for uh, C N, then the claim is that C of X is equal to A of X into B of X. Right, the product of the generative functions uh, of A and B will give you the generative function for C n. And the proof is simple. The proof is that C n is equal to summation i equal to 0 to n a i into b n minus i. The way we have defined. So what is what is our definition for C n? Right. So we said that C n is the number of ways to first build a structure of type A on 1 to i. Right. So basically that is uh, the you know that is uh, ai right and then uh, i can put structure of type uh, uh, type uh, b on i plus 1 to n which is uh, n minus i elements are there so on any n, n uh, given any n minus element set uh, uh, you know or n minus 1 as the parameter i have exactly b n minus i uh, structures of type b right so therefore uh, for a fixed i I have, you know, I have AI uh, structures I can make here and BN minus Y possibilities to do uh, on the type B structure. So therefore, uh, the total number of possible ways is that I can build any of the AI structures here, any of the BN minus Y structures there. So AI times BN minus I structures I can make, right? This is by the product rule of, uh, uh, so that we have learned before, right? Now, I can vary, right, because we said that for every each i, we have this option, right. So, I can fix the i to be either 0, 1 or up to n. Therefore, I can range from 0 to n, right. And then uh, each one, uh, you know, like, uh, is separate. So, uh, you know, they are uh, basically uh, disjoint sets. So, I can I can do the sum rule, right. So, I can say summation i equal to 0 to n, a i, b, n, n, n. And that is precisely the number of ways to make the three type structure so that is precisely cn right on the n element right so if we define uh, our uh, c type structures to be built this way then cn is precisely summation ai into bn minus i i equal to 1 to uh, 0 to n but then that is the uh, definition of the product of the generative function right so we said that uh, a of x times b of x is summation uh, n greater than or equal to 0 right Summation n greater than equal to zero. Uh, uh, summation ai times b n minus i i ranging from zero to n uh, x n x raised to n. Okay. 
this is the generative function of the product but then what is this this is precisely cn right so therefore i have summation cn x ratio n which is the generative function for this equal cn right c of x so therefore i get the uh, proof that c of x is equal to f x x c of x so this is a way to in basically this is a way to interpret what happens when uh, you take the product of two generative functions and if the generative functions are representing counting sequences for uh, structures right so this is there are there could be other ways to interpret this but uh, this is one uh, way that we want to do right this is a standard way to do it and precisely this right so we we see this as happening like you know you have one to n you basically uh, divide uh, it at you know uh, split it at i i position for any i put uh, uh, you know first type structure on 1 to i second type structure on i plus 1 to uh, n and then uh, uh, then you uh, you know do for each i this you can uh, do and therefore that is the number of ways to build the structure <coughs> now we can now use this uh, to solve problems okay so here is an example so uh, there is a short course on let's say combinatorial algorithms uh, which is offered uh, with a duration of let's say n days okay so there is an n day course like you know uh, like uh, 30 day course or uh, you know uh, 20 day course or you know 50 day course right something like that there is a short course on combinatorial algorithms offered and it has duration of n days now the instructor decides okay the first k days will be basic combinatorics okay. the remaining days right will be algorithms so the n days are split into two right first k days will be basic combinatorics because we need to learn combinatorics to be able to use in the combinatorial algorithm so first k days will be combinatorics remaining will be algorithms now one day in the first k will be non instructional day okay so out of the k days one day i will say i will not teach one day that is uh, you know one day's holiday that is decided mm -hmm. then uh, two days uh, in the second part right will be also uh, for uh, reserved for labs because without doing labs we you know we don't want to uh, finish the code so therefore we will say two days will be labs now the question is that how many days uh, how many ways one can plan this uh, codes right so because k can vary right uh, and uh, the choice of the uh, choice of the holiday can uh, also vary so therefore we need to figure out this right so <clears throat> first uh, uh, you know uh, we note that right uh, since we need to have at least one day as holiday right k must be at least one because if there is no day right i mean k cannot be zero because if there is no day i cannot choose one day as a holiday right for the first part so therefore k must be uh, at least one but it cannot be more than n minus 2 because uh, if there is n day semester two days must be reserved for the uh, reserved for the uh, holidays in the second part right so because we need at least two days there uh, it cannot be less than two days but apart from that there is no restriction so i can have k between 1 and n minus 2. Now, let us uh, define cn to be the number of ways the course can be planned. So, what is cn? cn is precisely the, you know, the number of ways to first, uh, you know, so split, uh, you know, the n days into two parts like 1 to k and uh, k plus 1 to n, right? Then choose uh, one holiday for the uh, first uh, uh, part, then two holidays for the second part, right? And once you do that, you know your uh, uh, your course is already planned, right? So therefore, uh, uh, for not holidays, uh, two days for the labs. So therefore, uh, we have uh, clearly uh, CNS, uh, you know, splitting uh, into k and n minus k, right? Uh, and then from the k, I need to choose one day. So there is k choose one uh, possibilities are there, right? So the choice of one uh, holiday for the first part of the course will be k choose one which is equal to k and then 
the remaining n minus k days are there for the second part and two days i need to do uh, fix it for lab right so two days i can uh, choose in n minus k choose two possible ways right so this is the number of ways to choose uh, two days out of the n minus k days so therefore k into n minus k choose two. this is the uh, number of ways to uh, design the codes you know if you have exactly k uh, days for the first part and n minus k for the second part now k can vary from 1 to n minus 2 we said right so therefore i can sum over all these possibilities so k equal to 1 to n minus 2 k into n minus k choose 2